Coopers. The stripper that gets it off every time. Hi everybody, back again. Today we're working on this antique metal clock. If I can get it to stop squeaking. that little bit there and I'll tell you all about it. Okay, hi everyone, I'm Simon Cooper. I'm from the Cooper Strip Club, and we're coming here today from Woodville, our base camp. And I um, picked up this um, clock recently from Hawara, and um, couldn't help myself. It's got this really crunchy, dried old shellac. It's um, just really, really, really lost all of its color and everything like that. And so, about five minutes ago, 10 minutes ago, somewhere in that range, I sprayed our stripper on that half. Um, and, um, and so we started off this uh, video with me giving it a scrub. So what we'll do is we'll do that again down here. So um, what I've done is got this soft copper detail brush. And we just, this um, old shellac here has turned to like toffee. You can just see it's all. And we just. Now we go on with our flush. We've got the, the red and the blue. The red's the stripper that does all the dissolving. And the flusher rinses it clean. So this is more of a job of liquefying the shellac. And it just turns into, into this um, toffee, as I say. And then wiping it off with a rag. And we'll probably. Do around a second time. This piece will end up at our home show, so if anyone's when they come to our stand, they'll be able to have a look firsthand. So yeah. these are pieces that they're just pretty much near impossible to do. Another way, it's got a shadow on there. Sorry about that. That's better. So it's all about liquefying. And that's it about there. So we'll give that now another round with the uh, some strip. So we've got most of it all off this time around. I'll just show you our guide. So usually it's always three steps. Step one, take off what's or strip what's on the surface. So what I did to start with is I put the stripper on, left it sort of around the five minutes and then gave it a scrub with the, um, the brush and then we, and then we I rinsed it because um, it was so sticky. So we're sort of adapting the system a little bit here. We've gone from part one to three um, and now I've gone back. Um, we're sort of down to the wood, but I want to get stuff out of the grain. So now we're doing number two and then a, th and then a three again. So each project is a slight variation of the method. You've sort of got to look at each job as it comes and go, okay, well, how do we, how do we interpret it? Okay, so get back to the brushes. So on these sort of jobs, the steel wool's really a waste of time. And the grip pads, this is these soft copper brushes are perfect. They don't scratch the wood, they get right into all those carved areas. And then as it's nice and sort of coming not so sticky as the first time around, on with the flush. 
clean rag. And that's all. You just see how it's all flying off. Now we get to see in the bottom of the car bits all the um, where they stamp it when they carve it, etc. They've um, got these little stamps of those impressions in it, so that was all invisible before. If you go over to the before side, I mean, you can't see any of that detailing. So it's all on its way out. All just light handwork. So of course this can be used on the old good old fashioned singer sewing machines, all those types of projects, anything with these carves in, the bentwood chairs with all the press carvings and so this is, again it's people look at those carvings and think how am I ever gonna deal with those. Now our stripper is virtually pH neutral so there's no damage being done to the wood. It doesn't matter if it's a veneer or in this case um, solid timber. We're not doing any damage. It's just working by dissolving and then the flush are rinsing and clean. So once more, if you've got any friends around the world that would be interested in looking at this, we um, air freight our products worldwide, and um, so they are available to anybody. Anyone's got any questions, any projects um, that they're interested in, how our product would be useful to it, just put a comment in there or email us. Um, go to our website which is cooperstripclub.com. There's heaps and heaps of videos and photos and information and all sorts. It's starting to now look the part. Enjoy the live stream because we never know exactly what's going to happen. Been doing this nearly 40 years now, so every now and again a curveball comes at you. Let's have a look at that. I reckon. A little bit more stripper will um, just improve it. In the bottom of those bits, there's still a bit of sticky stuff. So there's no harm in going back a step. We're not going to lose its patina. And we can just massage that stripper in. This old sound. It's almost like a 
start of a Pink Floyd song. Which is not a bad thing. Actually, I'll show you a little trick. So my brush is getting a little bit sticky. So what I do is I sort of cleans them up. Stripper, you normally put it on and leave it on for a certain time to do its dissolving. Flusher, you don't. You, you spray it and you scrub it at the same time. And of course, we've got them colour coded the stripper and the flusher to go with the guide. So three times around, there's obviously truckfuls of the original shellac there, and that'll um, dry off. So Now, while it's wet with flusher, this is the colour it would be if you were to put a clear finish on it. So that's a pretty massive difference. And um, some people would say, okay, we've well, got to put a dark stain back on it and refinish it like that. And other people can, they'll say, no, well, I like it, like it more in the way it's stripped back. So that's all personal preference. Um, and I'm sure there's all sorts of schools of thought. We have our own finish, which again, this would look quite good on. You've probably seen it on other videos. This is our um, moisturizer in my scruffy bottle. Um, and, and this is uh, like a skincare product for wood, a blend of gum, oil, and wax. Now, normally you would leave this to dry, but being live stream, you don't want to wait half an hour for that. So I can show you how it would look. You just slap the moisturizer on, This is a, so it's a little bit like a skincare for wood. The wood just drinks it up and this has been sitting on top of a mantelpiece. Probably why this has got so dry is because of a fireplace. So the wood's gonna be dry as a bone. And so this will just feed, feed, feed. Now, what we do is we'd normally leave that for a couple of days um, and let it drink away any time it looks like it needs more, you slap more on top. Once you've, um, once you reckon it isn't drinking anymore, 
you buff off any surplus. Now, if you use moisturizer, you can't use another finish on it. You can't polyurethane it or shellac it or uh, any of those sort of things. This is, when you go down the moisturizer trail, that's where you are. Um, but be, when you see this finish, you won't want any other finish. So, again, two days later, thanks for hanging around. And it's, it's fully absorbed and all that. And you then just simply buff the surplus off. And it produces what we call a mellow glow. And you can mess around and get into the nooks and crannies if you like, and we'll be good. So, we are done. So that's a quick one over Pretty amazing difference. And you can let your mind wander where else you could use it. So any paint, any varnish, any surface. And I'll finish off with my nice cheesy line. Are you looking for a stripper? A stripper that really gets it off. Coopers, the stripper that gets it off every time.